We're here in the final stretch, folks. Semi-finals is underway. McMegan versus Humyum, and this is a crazy one. McMegan is a veteran of Smogon, one of the best competitive Pokemon players of all time. Humyum, though, is a relative newcomer, so this is a crazy matchup. Humyum has gotten so far in this tournament. Let's see how this plays out. The winner of this set will progress to Grand Finals, and the loser will play the loser of the other set in a third place tiebreaker. A standard switch out to Skarmory. On turn one against Tyranitar, McMegan choosing to take a Fire Blast to establish that first layer of spikes, which is a common line. But does McMegan have a good response for the Fire Blast? Just choosing to go back Zapdos. Now knowing that it's Pursuit Tar, not as threatened by a Rock Slide. Rock Slide very unlikely. And Hum Yum choosing not to play for the 1v1, preserving Pursuit Tyranitar's health and going Blissey, which is sensible. Zapdos goes for a Roar, risking a potential Thunder Wave or Toxic. More Roars. Very good play from McMegan, revealing the teams. Starmie revealed is a big deal. That's a rapid spinner. McMegan. Continuing to just roar. Calling out Hum Yum's desire to continuously switch. Yet another roar from McMegan, trying to scout as much as possible. Stack up that spike chip. Chipping Starmie is quite significant here. Roaring again. And it's Doug Trio last. McMegan has all the info in the world now. Skarmory's obviously a safe switch in the face of a Dog Trio. And it's going to earn valuable chip heal, making up for that fire blast that it took earlier. Miss Drevis. All right, we might be in for a long one, folks. We've got Miss Drevis. That is a pretty nice thing to have in, in the face of Starmie, especially if it's defensive Starmie. That said, folks, it did just get paralyzed. Not the end of the world. Its main job is to spin block as long as it can get a rest off. It should be okay. And this is a rest Zapto, so it makes sense why this switched in against Tyranitar earlier. It has the heals. It has the bulk. Both with very passive teams. I mean, the Tyranitar is not even a win condition on this team from Hum Yum. It's just a Pursuit Trapper. Aiming to eliminate Gengar to allow for a safe spin. Tyranitar can eliminate Misdreavus if McMegan isn't careful. McMegan has to be very careful and preserve that Misdreavus as much as possible. Zapdos gonna... Sleep Talk Roar. McMegan likes the Sleep Talk Zapdos, so do I. Good set. Roar Zapdos is getting a lot of mileage. A game of inches. Roaring again. Hum Yum is going to struggle to break through this rest Zapdos over time. Doesn't have any super powerful anything really. The best it could maybe do is a Swamp at Ice Beam. McMegan is choosing to take the brunt of a Thunderbolt to establish a second layer. That is a interesting gambit. Double Ghost from McMegan. Wow. And getting paralyzed on Gengar sucks a little bit. Paralyzed on both of the ghosts. Going directly to Gengar there is crazy, though, I have to say. That is very risky. Even just taking 40 was a was quite a was quite a situation. And now this is a You're just gonna I I was expecting maybe an explosion. Could that have been Destiny Bond Gengar? Mean look Gengar? Something like that? Or is it just a regular old Gengar? Now, McMegan 
This this Blissey is cheating, folks. Is this Serene Grace Blissey? It's getting every para. It's getting every para on Earth. This is rough. This is a little rough. At least, though, it's in range of danger right here. And McMegan with a very nice double switch back to Sapdos. Hum yum. In shambles a little bit. Going Dug Trio there, trying to come in on a Thunderbolt. I guess that's totally safe because Zapdos has Thunderbolt as its only attack because it's Rest, Sleep, Talk, Roar. But still, you're taking Spike's chip. And the Dug Trio switch is very easily punished by Flygon or Skarmory. Screech. Interesting move. I think a Surf is just shy of KOE, but it's unlikely to have Ice Beam. So this is a nice opportunity to rest up, potentially. McMegan instead choosing to try and spin block with Mistrevis. It is Rest Swampert. Such a passive matchup here. I think that the sheer, sheer strength of Rest Zapdos could carry McMegan to victory. But it might take quite a while. McMegan also ahead on the spikes, which is very nice. Gonna sleep talk that time. It is curse swamp it. Does it curse rock slide swamp it? Because that would that would win here. We're gonna curse up again. Isn't Zapdos gonna wake and roll you out? Yes. Perhaps just choosing not to uh, spend PP on an attack there. Quite wise, potentially. Dugtrue obviously useless in the matchup, by the way, since it's uh, Superman, so it can't even trap anything. It can rock slide at best. Probably not even running rock slide, because it's running Screech. Unlikely to be using rock slide and Screech. I mean, I'm just trying to get rid of this Dug Trio. It's it's a liability. It's dead weight. And McMegan is very scared of that Tyranitar coming in, trapping Mistrevis. Playing extremely cautiously. Shipping Tyranitar is significant. McMegan is pretty behind. Some terrible luck, but going for it. Going for the golden path. The predestined path to victory. Which is Rest Zapdos, living forever. That's the that's the win condition. Without Aerodactyl, you lack any offensive firepower. You gotta use defensive value to win this game. I'm going to put it on fast mode because this might take a while. I think if McMegan does win, it'll take quite a while and that crit doesn't help, certainly. You could at least... Oh, no. Trying to sleep talk raw to get rid of that Swampert and it was... It was too little too late. That was a really unfortunate game one. Hum Yum is now up. On to game two. And a Reggie Rock lead in the finals. Semi-finals. We love that. Swampert lead's got to be like one of the best possible <laughs> uh, matchups against Reggie Rock, I must say. McMagan inviting in Magneton, getting the spike. Magneton pretty obvious alongside Reggie Rock, but what are you going to do? It's hard to dance around Magneton. Armaldo coming in. We got Armaldo in the semi-finals, folks. Facing a Regirock. Taking a superpower like it's nothing. Chip healing back up. Earthquake! On the incoming Metagross, it was maybe trying to snipe Magneton or just... Cover a potential Metagross? HP Grass hitting the Swamp and incoming? We got plays on plays.
What's the response? A simple blitzy? True. HP Grass, they often run Thunder Punch and Earthquake and drop MASH. That's often what you see. At the same time, MASH could easily still be run. And it is. Doing 53 to Blissey. This Metagross is not a good matchup. Gonna sack Armaldo. Armaldo's done enough. <laughs> we'll see you on the other side. And another terrible start from McMegan. Does have a spike up, but... Okay, manages to quell that threat. In comes Reggie Rock. Is Swampert healthy enough to handle this? No, we're gonna go Blissey. Sacrificing Blissey? That could be pretty smart. I mean, Hum Yum is mostly running physical threats alongside Magneton, you would assume. Blissey not as important. But McMagan is dangerously out of steam. This is looking rough, potentially. Snorlax comes in, and that is yet another tough opponent. We're gonna roar it out, though. And in comes Salamence as the last, so Blissey wouldn't have been too useful. Especially because it was too low to actually check Salamence nicely. Goes for a Toxic. But that's not going to cut it. And there's no Refresh on this Swampert. It's running Roar as the utility move rather than Refresh, so... Gonna just take a Toxic... In order to get this Surf damage in. So rough. I don't necessarily disagree with the Blissey Sack. I mean... Not a bad sack. However, Blissey would be nice to have right here, wouldn't it? If you Toxic, you're the goat. No. T hardest Toxic of all time to click there. I don't blame you. And, uh... You could Toxic right now, though. Raw? Alright, you're just gonna sack Swampert, basically. Swampert's got one more turn left. No, you're gonna preserve it for a moment longer. To sack it later. You correctly called out the Magneton protecting. And you return back to Swamp It. You have a Torrent uh, Surf to do pretty good damage on the way out. Alright. Swamp It did not protect, notably. Does it not run it? Gyarados is actually... That could win. How low is Snorlax? It's 88%. Go back to Renata on... You're a genius, McMegan. You're chipping the snow like slightly. Inviting it in to check Gyarados. Do you have Dragon Dance on this? No. But Rock Slide is enough to finish off Magneton. Swamp it. Is 63%. Gyarados can come in safely against it, so... Hum Yum is hesitant. Tyranitar does have Dance. It does. Swamp it obviously going to check this, but Gyarados can come in pretty nicely. It's neutral to ice, immune to ground, resists water. Unlike Salamence, Gyarados is a Dragon Dance Sweeper that isn't that scared of Swampert. Back to Tyranitar again. It's Curse! But Gyarados handles that pretty well. It intims it. McMegan now knows you have Curse. Can this win the 1v1? I think it can. Your only physical attack is Earthquake. This is just for the defense. Gyarados can dance up. Swamp it has to hit Ice Beam Freeze or something to win this. The Snorlax is a concern though. The Snorlax can... Well, I mean, if you've danced up, not really. If you dance up to the point where you can KO it after a spike, you're good. Swamp it is going for Ice Beam Freezes in this 1v1. I don't know if the odds are in your favor, Hum Yum. You might also just be able to chip it down slowly but surely, however... What if this is Rest Gyarados? That would be perfect for McMegan here. Although, Snorlax would be able to come in and explode. Okay, we are... Okay, all of a sudden it's not looking great for, for McMegan actually. With, uh... Doing peanuts to swamp it. You get the crit though! Making up for last game a little bit with that crit. That was that you needed that to win. The odds were probably actually in Hum Yum's favor there. My mistake. And McMagan. 
with a bit of divine intervention recovering that game two. Now onto game three and one, another Zapdos lead. Forcing out this Salamence. We go Bliss. What does Bliss choose to do here? Toxic. That's massive against Zapdos. That's already a huge advantage early. I would like to remind you folks, there's money on the line here. This is playing for a position in Grand Finals. The stakes are enormous. They've never been higher. Don't tell me we've got a sandless mirror for the final game here. Spare me. The tension is too much. And comes Skymory. Hum Yum has revealed entire team here. Go Dog Trio. Oh my gosh. McMagan with an incredible Dog Trio switch calling out a Magneton in the back. I don't know if that was the intention, but it worked out. That is unreal. Your Skarmory is now totally safe. And are we looking at a physical Salamence here? That, that would make sense alongside Magneton. It really would. And Thief! An insult to injury, still in Zapdos' leftovers. You're probably hoping to target Skarmory there, but this is alright too. Here we go. Oh, Zapdos has rest, so actually it's healing off that toxic. You're pretty happy that this no longer has leftovers, as it turns out, because otherwise this would have been a much more difficult thing to break. Rest Zapdos gets huge amount of value out of leftovers in sandless matchups. I'm going to go ahead and make an executive decision to put this on fast mode, because this matchup looks like it's going to take a while. Megan playing around that wake up thunderbolt. Bit of a Zapdos 1v1. One of them has leftovers, the other doesn't. This is going to take a while, but McMagan is certainly ahead. Magneton eliminated. Zapdos without leftovers. Both have three spikes, though. It looks like Hum Yum's main form of offense is probably that Salamence. And McMagan even has a Clay Doll. That's... that's massive. There's no uh, spin blocker. So this Skarm is spamming raw and eventually Clay Doll will be dragged in and be able to rapid spin. Oh, hard switch to Clay Doll though. Soft boiled up. Hum Yum is playing this pretty well. Every time McMegan chooses to, to switch in Clay Doll, Hum Yum is correctly roaring it out and getting a lot of value out of these spikes. McMegan just needs to get Clay Doll in once, but Hum Yum making it hard. Bit of conditioning here. Very well played. And wishing up this Zapdos. That was a crit opportunity. Didn't get it. All McMagan needs is a single opportunity to get Clay all in and all of a sudden Hum Yum is basically finished. Just a rapid spin here. There you go. No more spikes and McMagan is looking, looking great. That is a choice band Salamence. As I expected, and uh, yeah, with Skarmory at full health and uh, Rapid Spin able to completely shut down any form of progress making from Hum Yum, I think McMagan has this. It just might take a while. Hum Yum is going to have to play like an absolute 
elite level gamer to overcome these these odds. McMegan is looking rock solid. This is why you bring Tyranitar, folks. <laughs> Tyranitar speeds things up. But both of these players confident in their ability to play these slow teams, bringing them in the, one of the highest stakes games of their entire careers. This is rough, I mean, in such a high stakes position, playing a team like this where games can go really long, it's easy to make a mistake under pressure. And perhaps a lifeline for Hamyam, a freeze on Zapdos. Although, now uh, you can't freeze anything else because of freeze claws. You can only freeze one thing at a time in Gen 3. Zapdos did Thor, though. The singular win condition for Hamyam is slowly but surely losing its health and getting pretty easily stopped. With a switch to Swamp It, taking nothing from Rock Slide. We're gonna see a post 100 turn game here. <laughs> this is insane. Plus he has opportunities to crit this Zapdos and freeze switch-ins. Not a bad position to just spam. Ice Beam. That Claydol is toxic, which is a little rough. McMegan might eventually lose Claydol, allowing Humyum to in fact re-establish the spikes. The issue is just the Skarmory. Humyum was definitely relying on that Mag Trap. And without it, it's very, very difficult to break through. Very, very difficult. We are <laughs> beyond the point of no return, folks. 100 turn, 105 incoming. And we're in infinite switch hell. Hamyam could maybe draw this. That's the best hope, I think. Go for a draw. There must be some draw position here. Because McMagan doesn't necessarily have much firepower either. I'm mean, playing for this 1v1 against Swampert. It might be time to break out the hyper fast speed. Because we're at an endgame that is. gonna involve a lot of switching. A lot of slow progress. Swamp it's down. I think the best hope for Hamyam is some sort of draw with uh, Zapdos and Skarmory, who both are immune to spikes and have a lot of longevity. They could infinitely switch, potentially. Don't know. That being said, I'm pretty sure McMagan can threaten both of them with. Bullshit and Zapdos of his own. Oh, there was an opportunity. Wow, it's Counter Skarmory taking out that Choice Band Salamence. That was pretty insane. There was a risk of Rock Slide flinch right there. I think Mega Megan wanted to cover HP flying on the Swampert switch or something like that. Now Hamyam is probably playing for that draw. Spamming raw. We're in the infinite switch mode. <laughs> I 
It's going so fast. Look at these Pokemon switching out and in. Like it's nothing. Skarmory gonna run out of drill packs. Yeah, McMagan can just force pressure with Zapdos. McMagan can play this game too of infinite switching. What are you gonna do? Claydol has an explosion in the tank too. That's worth an Odoo. Huh, it's, it's honestly possible for Hamyam to draw this. We'll see. Oh, lands the Thunderbolt on Skarmory, that's pretty massive. And now, Ice Beam is insanely good. If you have a crit... Oh, Hum Yum gets the Thunderbolt power there. Uh, uh. The fact that Zapdos has no leftovers too is rough. And there it is. You finally broke through Zap and 201 turns. McMagan gets there. McMagan is so good at uh, playing out these long games pretty perfectly. There was a famous like a thousand turn game with Mistrevis against some sort of Milo Claydol team. And McMagan toughed it out and won. McMegan is in Grand Finals, folks. Congratulations. Hamyam will be playing the loser of ABR versus Sapientia in a tiebreaker set for third place. Well done, Hamyam. You've come so far. Incredible work. And thank you to Chadalak for a $15 donation. What a trip ADV Revival has been. Sad to see it come to a close. Thank you for the content. Thank you, Chadalak, and thank you everyone for watching. Low Elo Rat with $19.20 says, Thank you, Big Jimbo, for putting together this tournament, and all the players and commentators who have helped make it happen. You all have bit me with the ADV bug, and I've watched every video. I can certifiably say they are all insane. Now can we all just donate $1? Thank you, Low Elo Rat, for the kind words. I appreciate all of you tuning into this tournament. It's coming to a close soon. About three more sets left. I appreciate it, folks. I know this was a set with a very, very long game, but I think those games can be exciting too, especially when the stakes are as high as they are. Thank you, everybody. Catch you later.